Hi, I'm David. Today we're gonna finally record with this Tascam 38 uh, reel to reel 8 track tape recorder. I made a two video series about the restoration of the machine and now it's, it's finally working and is in the studio. So we're gonna finally uh, record a little song with it. So the first thing that you want to actually do with the machine like that and any kind of uh, professional studio will actually do it uh, every time you want to record and um, you know um, is cleaning the machine perfectly cleaning the heads and uh, demagnetizing the heads and realigning um, all the uh, you know record and uh, playback um, levels realigning the heads if you can and uh, everything I'm not gonna realign the heads I don't have a test tape uh, I'm not gonna realign uh, I'm not gonna uh, set uh, the levels on the input and output amplifiers um, because I don't have a test tape uh, you really must have a standard test tape to do this kind of work so I don't have it I don't wanna touch the heads uh, I don't want to touch the preamplifiers and um, I'm just gonna clean the heads and uh, demagnetize the heads. It's very important. You should actually do that every time you want to record with a um, reel to reel tape recorder like this. So, to load the tape on this machine is very, very easy and uh, it's very straightforward. Uh, you put, uh, you place the actual receiving uh, a reel here and uh, you then have the uh, the actual tape reel and this is the way it goes in my particular case uh, is um, empty uh, it's empty reel on the right and uh, the actual tape is on the left you can uh, you um, could actually encounter on many many studios they do that uh, they actually um, rewind the tape tail tail out so the full reel will be on the right I do that for convenience so I don't have to rewind everything every time but uh, it's a very common thing so now tape is ready this is a new tape has even the little label here and lift everything up and uh, you make sure that this is disengaged you pass the tape here on this uh, guide over this uh, roller and on the tape heads you then pass it through the pinch roller over here and through the other guide one here and you just slide it back so the little uh, label here is a little bit sticky so it will actually retain the tape as is but you want to always have a couple of turns of tape and now it's actually ready so the tape that I'm using is not the Ampex 456 you see here but it's rather an SM468 from RTM uh, from recording the master um, it's a company based in France that still makes tapes with the original uh, bass formulation and uh, those are very very nice tapes and uh, yeah be aware that I'm not sponsored by anyone uh, I just uh, I just love their products and as I said with a machine like this you really must have a lot of cables and I mean a lot of them so here you can actually see that I decided to disconnect uh, completely the two um, FV system uh, controls um, to uh, you know control the the two DBX noise reduction units from the machine. So the machine on the back has a little connector like this, and um, that connects on the two um, systems, and you can cascade the two. You have a little connector on the back here um, so that um, was not properly working on uh, one of those two units so I decided to modify 
uh, the you know both both units to uh, run independently. So now they're always on and always active. So you can actually connect those and use those uh, two noise reduction units also on whatever kind of machine I want, really on the TIAC A3440, or even you can use them on a cassette deck and that will actually reduce the noise really quite nicely. So as the console or mixer, I'm using this uh, Behringer mixer here and uh, you really, uh, this is a 16 channel mixer, you really uh, need a uh, just an 8 channel will be perfectly alright and I'm using it just for monitoring what I'm actually recording. So having two machines, having the Tascam 38 and the TIAC A3440, I could actually record on the Tascam 38 and then uh, transfer all the recordings on the TIAC A3440 and then transfer them back to the Tascam 38. In that way, I can actually um, virtually double the, the number of tracks that I have because I'm gonna record all eight tracks, I'm gonna mix them down to two tracks, I'm gonna transmit them back to the Tascam 38. And then I'm gonna actually have six more tracks to uh, to be recorded. So that's overdubbing, you know, that's uh, a way of, uh, of recording and uh, I'm not gonna do that in this video because I'm not, I'm not gonna do that in this uh, moment because I just want to use just this machine. a minute wait a minute I'm the future Dave here and uh, I was actually uh, listening to the final song I was actually mixing it in the computer and uh, you know what you know I have another idea you know the song was actually quite good turned out to be quite good <laughs> Uh, you know it's not like exciting I want something exciting for this machine I want something that rocks so you know what I'm gonna do it again all right so before even thinking about recording the guitars or the drum or whatever I need a time reference because I want to do it uh, correctly um, so uh, the time reference is actually provided by a metronome simply just a iPhone app and I'm gonna actually record that click to uh, track number 8 but uh, for now I'm gonna actually set uh, to 150 beats per minute and I'm gonna record that let's, uh, let's go oops Alright, so I'm gonna record two guitars uh, separately. So uh, I have a, I'm gonna have a very very wide stereo sound, and uh, I'm gonna use this amplifier here, which is a very custom amplifier that I made. Oh man, I made it uh, a lot of years ago, like uh, four or five years ago. Jeez, how time passes. I mean, I, I found this um, cabinet, which is beautiful. Uh, it was actually black, but I painted red I don't know why I found this uh, thing just uh, in the trash I was actually driving and uh, I saw this thing I just stopped immediately and I said oh man what are you doing here so I got it um, I brought it home but uh, you know it was trash that was completely trashed it was a push-pull uh, transistor uh, amplifier it was actually quite good it was a 100 watts 
amplifier i mean the cone inside is still perfect i mean just sounds very good and um, has two uh pre-amplification stages and um a single uh i think it was a tda i don't remember the the exact name uh one of those um all in one chip uh final uh, stage pre uh final stage amplifier Yeah, sometimes has some quirks. There we go. And um, has a nice distortion. All right. One, two, three, four. So track one is actually done. Uh, I'm gonna actually replicate that. So I'm gonna record the same uh, guitar, the same amplifier, and the same basic things. Uh, but on track two, so I'm gonna actually have that. Uh, I'm gonna then pan the two tracks in a stereo. Let's go. Take one. Alright, so I made a mistake. Uh, let's uh, come back because the, the first part is it's uh, it's good. So here is a little trick. You can actually do it, but it's very risky. Uh, at the end of the first verse, there is the uh, refrain, and there is the second verse, and then another refrain, which uh, all are good. I nailed those, but um, at the end of the second refrain. I got uh, I, I made a mistake and I made a mistake also on the ending so I'm gonna actually try and do a punch in um, test here it's gonna actually be hard it's gonna actually be very hard but I'm gonna try that ah too late ah! there it is there it is Oh man, jeez! It doesn't even. I I don't even notice that. Jeez, that that is super cool. It's a miracle. Oh, all right. So guitar is done. Let's record something else. All right. So according to the note, I uh, have uh, track one and two is guitars. Uh, the guitars are perfect, and uh, it's everything is done. So now. I have to record uh, so the drum kit and um, I'm gonna record it to tracks number three and four. I assigned two, only two tracks for the uh, full drum kit. So I don't know if you're gonna, if you're gonna agree with me, but uh, I'm gonna actually cheat a little bit. I'm obviously going to record drums in uh, with tape and uh, without any effects and anything added by the computer but since I don't have I just have this uh, I'm gonna show you that I just have this little mixer here but I need this little mixer uh, to hear what uh, there is on tape to hear the two guitars here on track one and two so what I'm gonna do uh, since I wanna actually record um, drums with uh, multiple microphones uh, more than two obviously um, Gonna record it uh, with perhaps, you know, four or five microphones. So I'm gonna actually have to cheat a little bit. I don't have a mixing console, and um, I'm gonna actually have to um, put um, to preamplify to use the preamplifier of my audio interface to um, to record drums on this. So I'm gonna actually have five microphones mixed. So I'm gonna use the computer as a mixer for the drums. I'm not gonna record the uh, the drums on the computer, and I'm not gonna actually add any effects of some sort. But I'm gonna ha actually have to do it this way because I don't have a mixing console. So that's the only way for me to 
to actually have more microphones, uh, more than two microphones really, um, or you know I could actually have uh, multiple tracks, more than two. Like uh, I'm gonna use um, four tracks for the uh, for the drum kit, but uh, I, I then would not have the space for. Uh, for you know a uh, you know the, the the bass and the organ all right so let's record drums so i placed the microphones uh, as you can see there are two overheads right there and there is the uh, snare uh mic here i'm not gonna uh mic also the bottom i mm, i don't care too much for this uh particular song and uh also the kick drum is actually mic'd up with uh, that um, microphone there so for the overheads I'm actually using two Rhodes MT5 uh, for the snare drum classic SM57 and um, for the kick drum an EV microphone a, a cardioid uh, a large diaphragm uh, cardioid microphone Alright, so the audio interface that I'm using is the Tascam US1800, you know, they love Tascams, and uh, has pretty good, pretty decent uh, pre-amplifiers, so it's, um, I'm um, going directly in uh, the uh, inputs, um, I'm using four channels directly into the uh, computer uh, that uh, is uh, providing the mixing of the uh, the various drum um, tracks and uh, there is no effects added in the computer in the actual digital audio workstation there is just a uh, DBX uh, it's under here a DBX 166 XL uh, for the um, um, the kick drum and the snare drum there is uh, adding a little bit of compression there there's a little bit of EQ um, and um, nothing really else so you know there is a digital conversion happening here but I'm using the maximum supported sampling rate on this uh, audio interface which is 96 kilohertz at 24 bits and I'm not recording uh, bear in mind that I'm not recording in the computer I'm recording directly into the uh, real to real recorder so the output is going out directly here from the phone's output and uh, it's not been recorded in the computer the computer is the digital audio workstation is actually working as a um, a mixer a very simple console all right so it's now time for bass guitar and i'm using this amplifier here this is a custom kxp 100 it is a, an amazing amplifier for the you know price point this actually has. It is uh, a 100 watts uh, 15 inch cone. Yes, 15 inch cone, which is just amazing, and uh, has a beautiful, uh, very uh, you know deep, uh, uh, low range. It's it's amazing. So I'm using a SM57 between the edge of the cone and the center. So I'm gonna get that uh, very creamy, punchy sound. Then I'm gonna actually, it's actually being recorded directly, but um, I'm also going to then um, pass it through a, uh, a, um, a compressor. And uh, when I will actually record it on the computer, I'm gonna actually pass it through a uh, DBX uh, compressor. And that uh, will actually give that uh, very punchy sound. And one of that, uh, because it's a very rhythmic uh, um, bass guitar that I have in mind, so yeah, uh, it has to really have that uh, very you know rhythmic uh, kind of punchy sound. I love it. So let's. Um, uh, it's gonna actually be recorded on track number five. I'm gonna actually uh, saturate a little bit uh, the the channel here, not the amplifier, but the actual tape. Uh, it's gonna actually be a little bit saturated, so I'm gonna actually have that uh, very nice uh, sound out of it. So uh, the um, the VU is showing uh, just a tiny little bit over the zero VU mark. I'm not a guitar player and uh, not a bass player, so I'm just uh, yeah. 
just playing around now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the sound is coming out from the speakers because I have my um, speaker bypass mod. Um, I have a video about it. I'm gonna have a little uh, thing coming up here if you wanna if you wanna see that. And uh, that actually allows me to to have that a uh, a direct out from the from the speakers basically. So. Uh, the signal from the speakers is coming out and it's going in a uh, a um, direct injection box which is there and from that it's gonna actually provide isolation and it's going in the um, um, Leslie speaker simulator here which is uh, quite famous it's the boss uh, RT20 it is uh, a fake Leslie but I think is really has a very very distinct sound I mean it doesn't sound anything like a no it yes it sound quite like a uh, Leslie speaker but not really like the real thing I I heard I played with a uh, beautiful Leslie uh, I think it was a 147 um, but I don't remember but uh, it was just Amazing the sound was super nice, but um, you know, I got this thing and uh, uh, Yeah, it's not like the real thing it has a completely different sound to, and at least to me to my ears it sounds completely different and uh, But I love it. I love the sound of this um, I love the character of this uh, little pedal and um, Has this uh, beautiful Rotating, uh, rotating visual uh, kind of uh, feedback. And you can make it faster, make it slower. <laughs> That's beautiful, and has a beautiful, uh, gritty, real growl-like distortion. And I'm gonna actually use it. And um, that actually the, the signal comes in and comes out, uh, and the uh, the signal out of this thing goes to an amplifier obviously it doesn't go directly into the uh, uh, the recorder and uh, I'm gonna show you the amplifier which is quite obvious to me and yes it is the mighty uh, Vox AC30 I mean geez uh, it's it's an obvious choice the microphone that I'm going to use, it's a uh, SM57, it's pointed between the center and the edge of the cone and uh, you can actually see there is a considerable distance between the actual microphone and the, the speaker and um, that um, actually is, um, is due to, I, I just want a little bit of uh, of the room sound because it's going to actually create a little bit of uh, you know wide wider a little wider perception of uh, the amplifier although it's actually recorded it's actually being recorded on just one track but uh, I create that uh, kind of stereo feel to it all right so I just wanted to show you to actually let you hear the difference between the uh, the actual clean sound of this uh, boss RT20 very briefly and uh, the distortion that it has it's very very nice and it's very characteristic of this uh, particular pedal I mean it's good for the the organ but it's also good for any kind of other instrument I use it uh, on guitars on uh, synthesizer even I mean it's super good and uh, that's the clean sound I mean, it's church like sound I mean just
but uh, if I increase the distortion of it, it can actually become really aggressive and I mean <coughs> And you know, the good thing about uh, having a real ham on organ is uh, the first is that, uh, you know, it warms up your room with uh, 14 tubes inside or valves or whatever you want to call them you know it's get it actually gets pretty warm but uh, the second thing is you know shut it down oh poor little fella <laughs> he just wants to be played all right so i was unsure what to do with track number seven and track number eight the two remaining tracks so I decided that uh, track number 7 would be actually reserved for some kind of percussions. So I'm, I'm gonna actually record a uh, tambourine. But track number 8, yeah, it's gonna be reserved for a special weapon. Noisy cricket. Hey, okay, no, no, come on, man. You, you get a, a series for the atomizer, I, I get a little, little midget cricket. Look, oh, yeah. I feel like I'm gonna break this damn thing. And yes, this is, uh, I mean, <laughs> this is really powerful. It's tiny, which is hilarious, but it's really, really powerful. Ah, man, let's record with this. On track number eight, let's do a little bit, a little solo, shall we? And have it connected to my my very own amplifier, and uh, is uh, the the microphone, which is a SM57, is uh, pointed to the edge of the cone this time. So yeah, uh, gonna actually have that uh, very um, deep low end of this. Uh, of this um, Korg, this little beast. Alright, so everything is actually done except the seventh uh, track, which uh, is actually reserved for a little bit of percussion so after a little bit of thinking I you know I decided that uh, I will actually go with a tambourine and uh, I will actually cover the uh, uh, you know enhance a little bit the rhythmic uh, feel of the <laughs> refrain and the last part so yeah I'm gonna record the seventh track and uh, you know, I, I then I'm gonna record everything back to the computer. I'm gonna transfer all those tracks to the main digital audio workstation and we'll actually mix that. I don't wanna really uh, make this video too long, so I'm not gonna show you the mixing process. And it's not the purpose of this video. So here it is, you can see the big cable coming from the uh, reel to reel recorder going straight into the patch bay and uh, then going into the actual um, audio interface right there so yeah I mean I'm gonna actually record those and uh, I'm not gonna show you the the, oh, the whole process of them. perhaps I have decided to, for the mastering process I'm gonna use this uh, this here which is a uh, uh, Beringer 1952 but uh, I'm not gonna use the compressor uh, that uh, the, the the compressor of this unit because it's uh, it sounds sounds like shit so 
Uh, I'm gonna use the uh, the final stage here, and uh, this is actually um, has been modified, and uh, now the tubes are actually running at the correct voltage of uh, approximately. You know, it's a little bit lower. I know it's, it's like uh, 150 volts, 200 volts, something like that, but it's much much higher than it was before. There was just like, you know. 40 volts you know star plate uh, kind of rubbish no i actually modified this uh, add a transformer a uh, input and output transformer and those are actually running fine at the approximately correct voltage so yeah i'm gonna actually wrap it up here and um in the next video we're gonna actually release uh, the uh, let's say music video of this uh, project and uh, you're gonna hear the, the master song. Um, uh, you know, YouTube, I, I'm gonna actually try and provide the best quality possible in the video of the song. Uh, but uh, if you wanna hear it, um, you know, in, in better quality, uh, please go and check out my SoundCloud page. And I'm gonna provide a link in the description and uh, it, gonna be able to listen to the song in much higher definition so as always thanks for watching i'll see you next time bye